Welcome back to FOMO Season 2. Today, we are at One Central World Trade Center for Bybit Crypto Hub's Blockchain Vanguard. I am the founder of a company called Carter Capital. We invest in companies like the ones that we've seen here before. Uh, we manage assets for clients, but we also have our own projects. We're currently beginning the tokenization of a lithium mine in Chile with lithium worth $1 billion on the ground. So it's going to be an interesting project. And we will be NFTing about 100 million trees in the Amazonas. My name is Shafiq again, and I'm the founder of the Crypto Hub, where we're building a platform to curate the best Web3 and crypto projects and connect them with investors. So one of the things we try to do here at the Crypto Hub is trying to sort of declutter the space by focusing on our main stakeholders, primarily the investors and the founders. So I think it's very important to do the research and hence why you know, many people have done the, the research here, they've seen all the beautiful presentations, um, they've seen the founders you know, standing out here, being under pressure, but still going through it you know, despite the noise in the back. Um, but essentially, I think it's very important to keep in mind the risk management. Okay? So I think many people in the space, um, there were be, cases when people put down their mortgages and they buy a second coin and it goes past them. I think it's important that this doesn't happen, okay? So just delegate a 10% or even less of your, you know, investing in certain coins, okay? Um, also, important to have a long-term perspective about the investing, okay? So when you have a long-term perspective, there's even um, a saying in crypto space, hodl, right? Hold on for their life, right? That means that you want to have a five to ten years and Gustav you mentioned you come from finance you know people have uh, in traditional finance they have vision in tens you know hundreds of years I mean, that's how the old money actually happens so I think that those are kind of like the most important uh, points yeah. I would like to very, very good so as we as we see now the the blockchain adoption is growing and now we see more people are aware of the utility and the usage of the blockchain technology. But now it's the key to leverage how to link this real world asset to the, to the blockchain space. And this is where I see mainly the NFT falls in place, where we can, we can start linking the real world asset to the, to the blockchain space by giving utilities, tokenizing asset. This is what we see a big industry that is growing more and more. We see big industry, big player, are looking into tokenizing real-world assets and uh, we really believe that uh, the NFT, the non-fungible token technology and soul-bound token will be unlocking this, uh, this utility in the future. The, 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 the myth that we're saying that mining was, uh, was against the, uh, the environment is uh, debunked. We have seen money white paper debunking and showing that because of mining we are having a communities around the miners where we are leveraging the power of, uh, of these miners and the solar energy and the wind energy and the uh, uh, water energy in order to leverage and, and uh, benefit more from this technology. So in my opinion, it's still, this is, we call it as FUD, fear, uncertainty and doubt in the space where we talk about the mining space. And one of the biggest proof is BlackRock, which is the proponent of the green energy and the, the green sustainability are investing in the, uh, of, uh, in the stocks and in the Bitcoin miners, which are claimed to be uh, against the, the green energy. So this is totally debunked in my opinion. The future of money is uh, we go off the side railways. The, let's talk uh, uh, co conspiracy. <laughs> no, but the future of money is really changing. We see the, 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 the change is happening. Money uh, will not be anymore just a case of uh, exchanging uh, and trading. It will be programmable money. I've seen the white papers that are being uh, released by the ECB, Electoral European Central Bank, and the CBDCs 
talking about programmable money that is uh, uh, like a scenario of uh, social credits where the also the the digital currency will be uh, helping or like growing this social credit system this is one of the ways but i think the cryptocurrency the decentralized cryptocurrency will give us this use case and this uh, way to not escape but have another alternative from having only cbdc or to choosing to own our own money and to choose to spend wherever we want whenever we want uh, so mainly, uh, my name is Chris. I have, I am the co-founder and CTO of Colossal Bit. Mainly, we do NFT and metaverse consulting and development. And my latest project is called NFT Connect, which is a Web3 uh, AI-based advertising and community management platform. We leverage the power of NFTs or of soulbound code tokens in ways to grow the community by using ticketing as NFT, by using proof of attendance as NFT, and creating experience that are gated by NFTs. One of the biggest problems that we had in the industry, especially in this, uh, in this uh, bear market, in this crypto winter, we, we haven't uh, felt it that hard in the past uh, cycle because of the advent of DeFi. And we found out particularly how important liquidity, uh, the, the liquidity aspect of uh, decentralized finance comes into play in this uh, particular bear market. So the liquidity crunch that has been happening over the past couple of years is real. And that's why we all, I guess, at, uh, at, uh, collectively agree that the future is multi-chain. And uh, I believe that if we are going to build applications that are sustainable, that re really leverage different blockchain technology, and each layer one or layer two or layer zero to its unique unique value proposition, we will be in a position to deliver products that are particularly unique or valuable because of the intrinsic values of the chosen layer, uh, chosen infrastructural level underneath them. With that being said, obviously I think that when it comes to uh, the, the, the future that will be multi-chain, that will be interoperable, we're still you know, relatively ways away, especially since bridges are one of the more, most, uh, most uh, vulnerable exploit vector. So I, th I think we're not there yet, but uh, we do hope that uh, we're gonna, you know, give up tribalism and try to really bring value to the, to the projects that we are delivering. When it comes to CBDCs, what we need to make sure right now as an industry is that the technology that blockchain has provided will not be used in a dystopic manner. So it is up to us collectively to make sure that the infrastructure of the financial system in the future is being built so that it is protecting people's privacy and it is not overly invading, um, you know, human rights or uh, you know, the, we, we don't really want the centralization of power that can come with CBDCs to, to affect life as we know it today, as, as we appreciate it today. With that being said, if we manage to make sure that CBDCs are, uh, are the future of, of money and that it will bring a step forward freedom and, and uh, society overall, I do think that cryptocurrency companies will be interoperating with CBDCs a lot more, whether, whether those CBDCs, whatever flavor of CBDCs will be developed. And I do think that there is a very important thing to be said when it comes to stable coins, because probably regulators currently see stable coins of different, uh, different uh, fiat uh, systems as competitor, but rather they should start looking to leverage the liquidity that is provided through decentralized finance and the overall opportunities that are provided by the crypto economy to make sure that their, their, their sovereign currency represented through a stablecoin or through a CBDC is providing liquidity and being used globally to a la larger scale. So I would encourage uh, you know, the, the, the uh, government entities in charge with, uh, with uh, these initiatives to explore how rather than fighting the crypto industry, how do they immerse themselves fully 
so that they capture the market as uh, because there's a lot of opportunities and right now with the stable coins that are in general usage that are US dollar uh, backed uh, this only solidifies the position of the US dollar so if if uh, there would be for example where we're here in the uh, UAE if there would be a uh, AD stable coin out there in the crypto market I think the sooner the sooner it is the, the better it would be for for the economy Same, similarly for Filipino it's a Filipino peso right yeah so yeah uh, embrace and uh, communicate and interoperate this question is twofold first of all we need to define what money is because money is something that maintains purchasing power over time whatever is currency is something that um, is there to lubricate services and uh, financial activity in the in, in a certain uh, economy so the future of money I hope that is hard money money that doesn't doesn't uh, solidify somebody's uh, position money that's fair for everybody and that rewards uh, human participation and value uh, uh, accordingly to to the value provided in the economy by uh, the, the respective uh, person entity so I hope that the future of money is fair uh, chances are it won't be but uh, yeah we can we can only hope that uh, something uh, that is uh, permissionless hard and something that is doesn't favor anybody in particular would be the future of money. You're gonna hear a lot more from, from us over at Headstarter. We have a lot of unique uh, DeFi products that uh, enable the growth of uh, crypto startups and with the more you know uh, regulatory loaded future we do hope that uh, our some of our unique products that we're coming out uh, to market with will really help a lot of the uh, startups in the future to to build and continue to innovate in the crypto industry. Hi, uh, my name is Shafiq, and uh, today here we are at the Crypto Arc, the Bybit Crypto Arc, which is this fabulous space that uh, Bybit has created in Dubai to bring together communities, and it's also their office space. So, where we're building a platform to curate the best. Web3 and crypto projects and connect them with investors. So I think uh, when you talk about regulations and uh, security, I guess there are two different aspects here because regulation has to do with, uh, with the, the governments and how they want to be seen, how they, how they want to be controlling uh, the, the tokenization and the distribution of these tokens and uh, how basically people are being affected by that, you know, in terms of the usage of tokens. So that is one aspect and I think in, in terms of how companies should be looking at it, well, there is a challenge between decentralization to keep uh, companies decentralized because the whole philosophy of the space of cryptocurrency and Web3 is to, to build things on decentralization which avoids uh, control, you know, so, but on the other hand, uh, we need to have a balance with, uh, with uh, regulation and uh, I think there is, there, is a, there is a fine line and depending on what type of project you have, it depends on that. So companies need to tread that fine line and make sure that the, the investors are protected. I think that's what the, regu the regulators want, to, want the companies to do. And I think that's one of the most important things. And when it comes to security, uh, I'm not sure you're talking about security as in like the technical security, uh, if you're talking about that. And I think the, there is many uh, companies that are working on providing more secure solutions, which are, you know, which are protecting their investors and their, whether it's their wallets or their assets uh, and, and how the, the custodianship of these assets are managed. So, so there are two different aspects here. So I think interoperability is obviously very important because you have multiple blockchains out there starting from all the way from, you know, we, we all started from the Bitcoin blockchain. That's how this journey started. And then you have the Ethereum blockchain, which is uh, the largest blockchain in terms of uh, the transactions happening on it. And then you have the multitude of other blockchains that are out there. Obviously, each of these blockchains has its strengths and weaknesses and, you know, 
uh, what we're seeing, seeing is an uh, evolution of uh, you know, different layers, like you have the layer ones and then you have the layer twos, and then there's the cross chain. So obviously, uh, I think in the, in the long run, we need to make sure there's interoperability to ensure that there is efficiency between different blo blockchains and it is a seamless experience for uh, the users because ultimately you know what we are talking about is making lives of uh, masses and the users uh, better by by blockchain solutions and that can only happen if you have interoperability between these blockchains so uh, again i'm not an expert on this subject but i know there are different companies that are working on these solutions and it is paramount from a user experience and user perspective. Uh, I mean it's a pleasure to, uh, to connect with you guys and thanks for interviewing me. Uh, so like I said you know we're building the CryptoHub.com which is a platform to curate and connect uh, the best crypto and Web3 projects with investors. So you know uh, follow us and uh, get to know more about us and we want to connect with other partners and communities and you know and uh, you're welcome to join us thank you very much basically it really depends on the on the section that we want to make it regulatory make it regulated basically um, on, on the trade point i want to give you an example in trade finance industry as if you want to send some packages from one country to another country the current existing and in the existing situation, even it's not digitalized. So you need to do paper and send the documents in a physical way. So in terms of the digitalization and, and in point of the compliance, uh, I think the first step that uh, countries should take is that make first that digitalize and then move it into the blockchain because we need to keep the documents digital and then move it to the blockchain. And blockchain is one of the technologies that um, we can rely on. And the steps that companies should take is really related to the regulatory steps because we need a mass adoption. Basically, we are in a revolution of the changing the current ecosystem of the financial system. So it takes a lot, it takes amount of time. I think, I believe it takes more than 15 years to have a regulated system based on the, some new cutting edge technologies like blockchain. Maybe, in, maybe, maybe, maybe 10 days later, the definition of the blockchain changes, you know? So it really depends on the demand and the technology because blockchain technology is really on the tech. So every product that comes out of the this comes out of this industry, it's really into the tech. It's coming from the high research and R and D. It's not coming from the user experience and something like that. My name is Benny. I'm part of XCC Network and Alco Finance. I'm a blockchain engineer and Web3 consultant. And at XCC, we are enterprise grade um, level one blockchain. We are IBM compatible. And I'm part of the Alco Finance as well. We are cross-chain DEX aggregator. We define a new layer in the li current liquidity system of the DeFi. So you can interact with Alco Finance as one project to connect you to all the liquidities throughout all chains. So Bybit is a centralized exchange. Uh, we have essentially been in the market since 2008 it's been five years um, we specialize you know as I mentioned in CFI right so trading you know spot trading derivatives trading uh, currently we've had a, an amazing event when many uh, colleagues in the industry um, came over and managed to pitch some of the ideas some of the great founders came over um, I was able to actually uh, communicate with a great host Gustavo and uh, to talk about the general basis of the industry and to talk uh, un underlining performances of ETF and uh, talk about tokenization of various um, assets from traditional market to digital market and how it affects um, the, the industry right now. I think uh, due to the fact that um, you know the the market um, has experienced a huge rise and now there's a, a certain turmoil in the market. We 
I think it's important for many projects and for ourselves to look into regulatory space. Okay, uh, I think regulation is very important right now. Uh, in Dubai, we we are in the progress of getting a viral license, uh, which is you know very important for the MENA region. And I think many other startups. It's very important for them to focus on a long-term vision and to work with regulators on the market to essentially create a sustainable business model where they can you know, play the long-term game of building the value for the cryptocurrency instead of focusing for the short term. Look, there, there, there's many, many blockchains, okay? And, and many companies actually specialize in providing um, cross-chain applications, right? So. I think it's more underlined with the DeFi space rather than uh, CeFi space. So CeFi, uh, because it's centralized, we, we, we have the ability um, to kind of, you know, we, have, we use various tools to um, prevent this. But essentially, in the DeFi space, due to the fact that uh, there, are many, there are many various blockchains being involved, I think it's important uh, for many startups to, you know, approach big, uh, companies such as, you know, for example, in the DeFi space, MakerDAO, um, Lido, who actually build in the cross-chain swaps as such. I have myself been in the industry for more than five years, okay, so when I was a student back in university, I was extremely passionate about blockchain and its innovation because I saw it being like the next internet, okay, and the Web 2, and now it's the Web 3. So. I myself personally dedicated my life to it because my career, because I think there's certainly a high innovation being involved. Many developers are, you know, t spending loads of time to build on top of Web3, okay, and in the crypto space. I think that you know the the blockchain innovation is going to change drastically. I don't think it's going to be the future of mining in particular, but it certainly can come to an underlying with the traditional finance. Hi, I'm Arundhati. I represent Bybit. I take care of partnerships for Bybit. So this event, Crypto Vanguard, was a manifestation from the Crypto Arc. Bybit Crypto Arc is aiming towards increasing learning-focused content and enrichment within the crypto community. So um, this event was an, it was an extension of our imagination to bring about uh, the Crypto Hub, which is also a growing and a thriving community in the GCC and to bring in uh, potential investors, projects that are looking uh, for some mentorship under uh, the blockchain space, which blockchain Web3, um, I would also say NFTs. We had some great pitches, great mentors, a good team of investors, a good team of mentors who came in. We did have an interesting fireside chat on um, future of investments within the crypto and the Web3 space. Um, uh, we, we did uh, understand a few things on whether it's going to be a bear market or a bull market. Uh, people were networking, we had a great time. Um, we, we had a masterclass by XDC Token, XDC Network. Uh, it was quite an insightful. So CryptoArc aims to bring together traders, partners, the community alike um, to network, grow, learn and share uh, more possibilities of uh, Web3 and crypto with each other in terms of manifesting dreams to actually uh, celebrating successful traders. So do come into our office, trade with Bybit, connect with us. Um, we have a whole space for you here. You can come work with us, join our community and grow. We are focused on learning, networking and onboarding. Great experiences within Web3.